Hi there fellow orthopods, we are going to be teaching you a few basics on periprosthetic infections in adults, one of the major complications following a total joint replacement and a cause of implant failure. What is periprosthetic joint infection? According to the Musculoskeletal Infection Society, it is when there is a sinus tract communicating with the prosthesis or if a pathogen is isolated from at least two separate tissue cultures or fluid samples from the joint, or if four of the following criteria exist, an elevated ESR, elevated CRP, raised white cell count, high synovial neutrophil percentage, presence of purulence in the joint, and once again, the isolation of a microorganism on culture of the periprosthetic tissue or fluid. Even if less than four of these criteria are met, periprosthetic joint infection can still be present if your clinical suspicion is high. Early periprosthetic joint infection occurs less than three months after the index surgery and manifests with acute joint pain and wound inflammation, which presents as warmth, erythema and joint diffusion. Patients may also complain of loss of function. Sinus tract formation and purulent drainage can also occur. Eventual progression to chronic periprosthetic joint infection will also present with pain and loosening of the prosthesis. Most prosthetic joint infections are caused by gram-positive cocci, staph aureus and coagulase-negative staph. However, there are some occasions where gram-negative bacteria and even fungi can result in prosthetic joint infection. It can also be polymicrobial. So how does periprosthetic joint infection happen? Reversible and non-reversible attachment occurs when bacteria adheres to the implant. There is cell-to-cell -cell adhesion between the microorganisms and the artificial surface. The non-specific characteristics of the bacteria, the biomaterial and the surrounding joint fluid play a role in reversible attachment and non-reversible attachment is influenced by specific receptors and structures. Staphylococci causes periprosthetic joint infection by something called intracellular internalization. It invades the host cells and lives inside and it can persist for a long time. According to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, ESR and CRP are good first investigative choices due to its high sensitivity. The next step would be to aspirate the joint fluid and culture it. Taking three to five samples from different locations around the joint will increase your chances of getting a positive culture result. If you're still not successful, then additional nuclear imaging tests may be ordered. Another simple test that can be used is leukocyte esterase strips or dipsticks as we know them in synovial fluid. However, it should be used with caution as bloodstain fluid may alter the results. Synovial fluid inflammatory markers such as interleukin-1 and interleukin-6 are also useful tests. Traditionally, irrigation and debridement along with exchange of the prosthetic components has been the treatment of choice. However, recent evidence has shown in patients with comorbidities the outcome is worse. The health status of the patient should be taken into consideration. Single stage exchange has become increasingly popular due to lower cost and decreased morbidity, but these high exclusion criteria are present, some of which include gram negative, methicillin resistant, and polymicrobial organisms. Two stage exchange arthroplasty has been used more commonly over the past few years. In the first stage, there is complete resection of foreign material, debridement of infected tissue, and placement of a cement spacer incorporated with antibiotics. Spaces allow for joint stability and they prevent soft tissue contractions. In the second stage, any other necrotic tissue and the spacer is removed. You will thoroughly irrigate and new prosthetic implants will be, will be placed. Antibiotics can be used after reimplantation in two-stage procedure, but chronic antibiotic suppression can be reserved for immune compromised patients who are unable to undergo surgery. In conclusion, the two-stage exchange replacement is the gold standard for treatment of periprosthetic joint infections, but the one-stage procedure has regained new interest and will possibly become more popular. 
this presentation was collaborated on and brought to you by fifth year medical students. For more orthopedic related videos, head to UC Teach Ortho on YouTube.